One of the major world religions is Buddhism, known for its peace and tranquility. What about Jesus in the Buddhist world? How does Jesus fit in? Some have said that maybe Buddhist people aren't really receptive to the gospel. We'll find out today, stay with us. God's love, elevating, energizing, empowering. Miracles happen when you know that you are loved. Peter Youngren has communicated God's love with millions from every religion and culture. Get ready for your ultimate life because you are loved. Welcome to this very special telecast from the nation of Myanmar. To many people, this country of 56 million people and 152 distinct people groups is known as Burma. But today, it's known as the Union of Myanmar. Out of those 152 language groups and people groups, 49 are considered completely unreached, among them some of the largest groups of people. Unreached as far as the gospel is concerned. And tonight, today, I welcome you into our gospel festival here in this part of the world. Behind me, there's a huge crowd as far as your eye can see. And, and, and the people are still coming in and in about 20 minutes time, I'm gonna start sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we have had an awesome week. In the next little few minutes, you're going to see some of the things that have already happened before tonight. But to really understand what's going on here, maybe we have to start at one of the thousands of pagodas that daughter this landscape. Wherever you go in Myanmar, uh, there are places of worship, temples we might call them, or pagodas. Well, we're going to take you right now. And Taina and I, a few days ago, visited the Golden Pagoda. As we walk here through all these many temples and shrines, we marvel at the amount of gold and precious diamonds and jewels that are here. In the Buddhist belief, there are 31 types of existence, and heaven is one of those, but heaven and nirvana, which is uh, being nirvana, being a part of, uh, of cosmos, being one with cosmos without a soul, is the highest form, and uh, they believe that the Buddha is there and people seek to get there, but heaven is a place before that, uh, a blissful state. It's, it's one of the 31 existences. And uh, the way that uh, Buddhists get there is by, in a sense, improving their karma through merits. Uh, doing good deeds that will cause them to be reborn in the next life in a, in a better position. All along this walkway there are so many holy sites and shrines for the Buddhist people. Uh, right over here is the supposed footprint, or the imprint of the, of the feet of the first Buddha. And people come here to worship uh, on special occasions. Some come every day. Well, there's so many images of people worshiping such sincerity. And you feel nothing but, res but respect for people who are reaching out to God with everything in them. And yet, I have an overwhelming sense of sadness. Talk to our guide here, and he says, there are very few, if any, of uh, uh, Buddhists that go to Nirvana. They try so hard, get up in the middle of the night, and uh, the, the monks in the monasteries, and they meditate, and, and yet, they can't attain nirvana, this ultimate goal. What a heavy burden. It made me think that religion is so filled with heavy burdens. I mean, this is what Jesus addressed with the Pharisees. So I would say thanks be to God for his indescribable gift of Jesus. Certainly when you see religion up close, in whatever form it is, yes, as I said, we respect that and I admire people's effort to get to God. But thanks be to God for Jesus Christ who has made the new and living way for every person. The Golden Pagoda gave you a little bit of a idea of what Buddhists believe. And sometimes for people from a Christian background, it's hard to understand and relate to it. If you take John 3.16, which is the familiar beloved verse of scripture, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Well, a Buddhist friend would understand the words of that verse, but possibly not the meaning. First of all, God, if they do believe in God at all, his God is impersonal. God is all of cosmos, all of nature. Everything is God and God is everything. Loved 
is not necessarily a positive term because to, to love someone means attachment. And the, one of the goals of Buddhism is to be detached, to have no attachment uh, to, to anything or to love anything. And so when we say God loved, it doesn't necessarily mean the same thing to you, and uh, to a Buddhist as it would to you and I. Uh, that none would perish. Uh, Buddhism uh, seeks to actually reach nirvana, which means oneness with cosmos, uh, to break the cycle of reincarnation. So everlasting life and not perishing are not such desirable terms in this culture. So how do we break through with the gospel? How do we do what Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature? How do we actually do that? And how do we get people to understand? Well, number one, we trust the Holy Spirit to help us. Uh, for example, here, every night I've been talking about karma. Karma is a big part of the belief of, of Buddhist friends, and they believe we must improve our karma by pursuing merits to good works. And so I used the phrase, I said, Jesus took upon himself your bad karma. Jesus took all the negative karma. I use terms that they can understand. And, and, and above that, or I shouldn't say above that, but part of that, we need Jesus to show himself alive. And for the next few minutes, you're gonna see just a parade of testimonies and healings, and we're gonna take you to the platform from the different nights here, and even out in the streets of the city and talking to people who have met Jesus. The gospel must be confirmed with signs and wonders. Before we go to this segment, and you'll not want to miss one second of it. I want to say a thank you to everyone who helps make this possible. Thank you for loving people. Thank you for reaching the Buddhist world and reaching all the world with the gospel and through this ministry. You have the information on the bottom of the screen. And so here we're still in the, in the festival night and people are coming in. Uh, just the streets are packed with people. But right now, let's go and see some of the things that have shown to our Buddhist friends that Jesus really is alive. This was the first woman I saw on the platform tonight. The right ear was deaf. Say what Peter Youngren says. Yangun. Myanmar. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. India. Alleluia. Myanmar. Amen. One. One. Two. Two. Five. Five. Alleluia. Alleluia. Singapore. Singapore. Amen. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. He opened her ears. Both of them? Yeah, both of them. Yangon. Alleluia. Uh, Africa. America, America, Singapore. Everything is clear. Who healed you? Sometimes people don't know who healed them. Jesus will even heal those who don't know that he did it. Check, like there's nothing sticking out. Nothing sticking out. Oh, now I find out. She had three tumors. How big were they, Mama? They were like this. How many fingers? How many now? How many now? How many now? Jesus has opened her eyes. Look at her happiness. I'm told this girl was blind on both eyes. Oh, when, when she was born. She was born, Nancy. Touch my nose. Come on, touch my nose. Come on. Oh. Hallelujah. She had a tumor on this left side right here. Now put your hand there, Tina. Right. Everything feeling normal? Now she's speaking English even. Oh, hallelujah. Look at him go. Thank you, Jesus. 
as healings and miracles are, they do not replace the preaching of the gospel because you remember what the scripture says, that it pleased the Lord that by the preaching of the gospel or the foolishness of preaching, people would be saved. So front and center every night is where I tell the story of how Jesus came, Jesus died, was buried and rose again. And so we're gonna go to a segment of, of, of that preaching will show you how we present Jesus. And then at the very end, uh, we'll, we'll also share with you uh, the response. Thousands, night after night, have said, yes, I want this free gift of salvation. I want this gift of forgiveness of sins. And so you're going to see that. And then before our telecast is over, I'm going to save the final part, my final comment, till after this service tonight is over. So I'll probably be drenched with perspiration. It's extremely hot here, but uh, we'll talk to you in a little bit. But right now, watch some of the segments of what's happening already and how people respond to the gospel. Jesus Christ, yes, the same yes, yesterday, today and forever. Now we could talk about yesterday and yesterday was wonderful. We could talk about forever in heaven and that's wonderful. But if you have trouble today, if you've come with a sinful heart, if you are lame, if you're deaf, the question is not, who was Jesus yesterday? Jesus be forever. But the question is, who is Jesus today? Today. I want to be talking about today. If God's promises were good 2,000 years ago, God's promises are good today in Yangon. If Jesus healed the blind and the deaf and the lame 2,000 years ago, you can bring the blind bring the lame. You can bring the deaf to insane stadium. And Jesus will do miracles here because he's the same. He's the same. If the biggest sinner could be forgiven 2,000 years ago, then the biggest sinner can come to Insane Stadium and be forgiven today because Jesus is the same today. 
Why have I come to Yangon? You already have so many beautiful preachers. You have the most beautiful temples. I visited your golden temple yesterday. So many nice priests. So many nice pastors. So why did I come here? I have come to be a witness. I am a witness that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now you hear me talking about reaching Buddhist. And I know when I keep talking about that, people say, well, what's the big deal? You know, let's, let's stay with the people that are right here. Well, well, let me tell you what the big deal is. The big deal to me, and I think to others, is that like Oswald J. Smith, the founder of the People's Church in Toronto, coined the phrase, why should anyone hear the gospel twice before everyone has heard it once. It wasn't that he was against people hearing the gospel again and again, a hundred times, a thousand times, 10,000 times. That wasn't the point. The point was that there are some who have never heard it. And I talk about reaching Buddhists because that's important, not just to me. It's only important to me because it's important to Jesus. How do I know it's so important to Jesus? If you carefully study the scriptures, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and the book of Acts. At the end of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, at the end of each book, Jesus is giving like the final comments to the disciples. And then in the beginning of the book of Acts, he's still here. He's now the risen Jesus, but he's still walking among the disciples for 40 days, and he's given them the final comments. Now, you know, if, if I'm with somebody for a long time like Jesus was with his disciples. And then I know, okay, our time together is almost over. It, it, it's soon over. And, and, and I want to just make sure they get the main thing. They don't forget the main thing. And what I would do, I said, okay, let, let's remember what this was all about. That's how I look at the end of the four gospels in the beginning of the book of Acts. See, at the end of, of, of Matthew, Jesus says, now go and teach all nations. Make disciples of all nations. I'm with you always. And then at the end of Mark, he says, go and preach to every creature. At the end of Luke, the last chapter, he says, well, it, the, the whole thing, everything about that Christ would suffer and die and rise again. What is it all about? It's about that the remission of sins and the changing of hearts would be preached into every country. And, and in John, Jesus is saying to us, the end of the book there, yes, the Father sent me. I'm sending you. I'm just an example. I was sent to you. And, and now I'm sending you into the world. And then, you know, when they were, they thought that the end of the world was coming right away and it was all going to be wrapped up. And they said to Jesus, when is it going to happen? He said, well, don't worry about the times and seasons. But when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you shall receive power to be witnesses to me. And in Jerusalem and Judea and Galilee and Samaria and, and, and the ends of the earth, all of it simultaneously. So Jesus is bringing this in front of them all the time. He tells when Jesus appears to, 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 to uh, uh, Paul on the Saul of Tarsus, he, he talks to him about, I'm sending you, I'm sending you. When Jesus appears to Simon Peter from heaven, it's about Simon Peter not knowing that, that the gospel is for the whole world. He, he, Simon Peter had a, like, like he made it tribal, like it was just for the Jewish people. And, and, and he sees this, this sheet of unclean animals being lowered and, and the voice of Jesus says, uh, Peter, don't consider anybody unclean. What's it all about? Well, what is the urgency of Jesus that everyone would hear the gospel? So when, I, I, when I'm speaking to you from Burma and I talk about the Buddhists, well, it's because half a billion people are Buddhist. And among them, there are large people groups that have no witness of the gospel. So that's what makes it so urgent. In a moment, I'm going to go back. Then we're going to look at a testimony of a man who, 
what God did for him touched people's hearts. You know, we counted the first night, 45 people healed of deafness. Some were totally deaf, some partially deaf. Second night, we counted 40 or more than 40 people we lost count who were various degrees of blindness. One was born blind, others were, you know, partially blind or had cataracts. But of all the testimonies, maybe the testimony you're going to see really affected the people. This man is Mr. Mr. Uchit Ku, and uh, you'll see his wife in the picture. And I'm going to tell you the story. Just stay tuned for it. Here we go. I had a problem with my ear for 35 years. I felt very sad because I couldn't hear people talking to me, and I was depressed. I felt sorry for my husband. He had trouble to understand people. My sister told me about the festival, so I went. I had a vision of Jesus yesterday. He wore a white cloak and a robe. I started shaking. I saw Jesus take my hearing aid out of my ear, and I could hear clearly. I felt so happy at the stadium because I could hear very clearly. Even now, I can hardly believe that I am healed. After the healing, we have been so happy that we forgot to eat for a whole day. We didn't know about God, but now we do. God is so great. I can hear very clearly. I believe that God is alive. You know, it was so wonderful when we, our team members, met that man who had this vision of Jesus. And he described how he was just shaking when he saw that vision and, and Jesus opened his ears and it really touched the people when his testimony became public there in Yangon, Burma. It, it, it was marvelous. But when the team went there, I don't know if it came out in the story, he had gone to church that morning, a Buddhist man, deaf for 35 years. He had to go to a church. Nobody told him to go to church. He just wanted to go, a go to church and say thank you to Jesus. So at first our team didn't find him because he, he, he was in the church. <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, so, so it's, it's amazing. Some people say, oh, what about follow up? It's amazing when people meet Jesus, they probably want to go to a church. But what I want you to see here is very important. I don't have illusions that somehow I'm some great preacher or someone else is a great preacher and we can just persuade people with our words. No. It is God's plan that the gospel is confirmed with miracles. It says in Acts 2.22, when Simon Peter preached on the day of Pentecost, he says, I I'm declaring to you Jesus Christ, who was attested by miracle signs and wonders among you. He was attested. So think about that. Jesus had to be attested. Now the word attested, it's kind of an old English word that we don't use, uh, use a lot. We used to have letters of attestation. Uh, it means a letter of, of attesting to something. Now we call it a diploma. Maybe if you finish the course, you get a diploma. But, but a letter attesting to your ability, it, mean, it means you have somebody with authority saying, he, he, he's an electrician, he, he's a plumber, he, he, he's a carpenter. And it, that's the word used here by Jesus. He was attested, attested by signs, miracles, and wonders. I thought if if Jesus in his physical body needed miracles, signs, and wonders, how much more do we need it today? You know, Jesus could have said, well, I'm the mighty Jesus. I was born of a virgin. I had wise men come and visit me. Um, you, you know, he could, he could refer to various supernatural happenings in his life, but that's not what Jesus did. He said, no, where, where I'm there, there's going to be miracles, signs, and wonders right there. And friends, today, it's the same. I would be nothing. I don't consider myself any great preacher, but I do preach a great one, Jesus Christ. And if it wasn't because of miracles, showing the people and testimonies like the one you saw, Mr. Ushit Ko and his wife joyously sharing, you know, his wife said there, she said, I, we did, haven't eaten all day because we've been too excited. We forgot to eat. And this was about 24 hours after the miracle had happened. And so many others like that. That's how the gospel goes forward. God is the same for you. Call the Grace Prayer Center. You see some information at the bottom of the screen. 
We want to pray and believe with you. We're not just showing these programs and these clips from Burma to make you say, oh, over there somewhere far away, God's doing something great. You know, I wish you could do the same thing. Jesus is where you are. Many of the people in Burma said to us, they didn't even know who healed them. People get freaked out. They said, oh, me and the people are healed. They didn't even know who healed them. Don't be upset about that. That happened in the Bible. The blind man in John 9 didn't know who healed him, but God still healed him. And, and, and so then we explain to them, of course, it is Jesus Christ. So you call. Let us hear from you because uh, God wants to touch your life. And if you want to receive Christ, call also. The number's there, and we want to hear from you. We love you so very much. But let's go back and finish our program today right from the festival ground there in Yangon, Myanmar, more known as the country of Burma. Would you pray like this? Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you. I believe you died for my sins. But you rose from the dead. Jesus, come and live in me. I change my thinking. I, I cannot save myself. Jesus saves. And now I confess. Jesus is Lord. Amen. Amen. Here we are, two hours later since I last spoke to you. We have been here seeing miracle after miracle, an hour of testimonies, blind eyes open, deaf ears open, many tumors gone, so many healings. I want to say thank you. Thank you for every one of you who make it possible for us to reach those who have never heard the name of Jesus. Thank you. Tonight I told them, when you go home, Jesus goes with you. We gave them a special book that you helped pay for that will help them to know more about Jesus. So they're receiving all around the exits of the stadium. They're receiving my little booklet that you paid for, partner. Thank you. And now I need your help so much. But So please call with your very best gift. I need it. I can't. But let me say as well, if you need a miracle, call the Grace Prayer Center. The same Jesus who heals people here, he will heal you at home today. God bless you. See you next program. God bless you. Thank you. Your partnership makes this ministry possible. To share your prayer request or to help bring the good news of Jesus Christ to thousands who have never heard, call 1-877-974-7223. You can give at www.peteryoungren.org or send your gift to World Impact Ministries at PO Box 2108, Vista, California, 92085-2108 or 190 Railside Road, Toronto, Ontario, Canada, M3A 1A3. Together, let's give everyone a chance to hear the gospel.